live. I'm good. Hi, family members. Welcome back to Empowerment Network with myself, Comfort Conco, and our dear brother, all the way from PNG, our beloved country, our brother Daniel. Bro, welcome to this session. Thank you very much, Comfort. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm very happy to come with you and discuss because we all have share the same passion. So I hope uh, my story will inspire uh, other friends as well. Thank you. Yeah, ho hopefully I'm very excited. So I think that is going to be a great inspiration. And we've been having a long chat all back and forth. So if you would, uh, Daniel, tell us a bit about yourself, maybe a tiny bit about your family, education and your career. Just share as much as you would like us to know. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I come from a big family and uh, I am the second born. I'm the second born in my family. Uh, my elder brother passed away already uh, and I'm the second. The, th the third one is here with me in Port Mosby. He's a, he's, a, he's a soldier and I have other siblings, but two brothers passed away. Three of them passed away. Uh, we are, I have my two sisters, my three brothers surviving at the moment. They are all founders. I, I, I introduced on passion to them. So uh, my mother passed away already, my dad also. Uh, but I'm now, they see me as the eldest because uh, I'm the second born and, and I, I, I have a responsibility to my family. And they call me dad actually because I'm the, I'm look, they look upon me now as the elder brother. So that's, uh, that's my family background. Briefly, I'm from, uh, I'm from where David Bakao comes from. We come from the same province with Susan Bakao. We're all from the same area. And in fact, David introduced on Pasi to me. I will talk about uh, that more later on. My education background, uh, comfort, is very uh, very unique because I was uh, I was a dropout. Uh, we have uh, up to grade six, year six, and I, I was uh, pushed out of the education system uh, in 1977. So I was I didn't make it to high school. Uh, because of the system. So I was, uh, my mother is a domestic servant. So I helped my mother look after my small siblings uh, for a year in 1978. I left school in 77. In 78, I stayed home with my mom, uh, helping mom to look after my little ones. But uh, after a year, I feel that I have to go back to school. Uh, I don't know, I have a burning desire to you know do something for myself because I see life uh, my mother goes through a very challenging life and I feel that I have to do something about my life as well. So I asked my mother to help me to go to school and she paid for my correspondence studies. I studied through correspondence. Actually, I made my career, my education from uh, in Papua New Guinea, we say grade seven. When you finish year six, you go to seven, eight, nine, and 10. I did all this with, through correspondence, self-study at home. So I, 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 Normally they take four years to complete their year then, but for me, because I'm studying alone, it, it took me almost, uh, not almost, but actually eight years, eight years to complete my year 10. Yeah, and uh, anyway, to cut the long story short, uh, I finished grade 10 and uh, I, I got good marks. Uh, I got two credits and two distinctions, so I did well. <laughs> so, uh, I just went straight and I said, no, because I'm, my mom is struggling. And I said, I cannot, uh, I really have a burning desire to continue my education, but then school fee is a problem. Now. I cannot go through because of my, uh, the uh, capability of my mother, because uh, she cannot uh, afford it. So I said, anyway, I have to find a job. So luckily I applied to a commercial bank, an ancient bank, Australian New Zealand bank. Luckily, I still remember the, the Australian accountant at the time. His name is David McTaggart. I applied and he actually called me for an interview. Back in 1987, <clears throat> excuse me, so he recruited me. And I didn't go in for the, for, for the money because I had a burning desire to learn. I want to develop as a person, fit into society. So uh, when I get into the banking system, my goal was to learn as much as I can. I was not thinking about any money. I, I went there for to learn. So I, I, I 
in the bank, they provide uh, self-development courses in banking. I did all of them because I have a desire. And then uh, the human resource manager saw that I have a desire and they said, they put me as a high high performing officer. So they brought me from that province out to Port Mosby and that's where I developed into my international banking career. I'm specialized in international trade finance. I made all my way up. I, I had an opportunity to I work as a trade finance manager in uh, ANZ Avarua in Rarotonga in Cook Island. I went there, the bank sent me there. So uh, because I had the desire to to explore and learn, and, you know, and, and that's how I, I ended up there in my career. They saw the potential in me and they invested in me. And, uh, and then I went through and the bank sponsored me and I went to a college from a, from a dropout all the way to a college and I had my Diploma in business in Papua New Guinea Institute of Business Management. So anyway, that's my that's my uh, career. Yes. And yes, sorry, that, comfort. That, that, that's that's very powerful. You know, I could not stop nodding, brother Daniel. I really appreciate you for sharing this, guys. Let's say, let me know what you think in the comment section about brother Daniel's story. Sometimes we just need to listen to people so that we find out why they are very, very passionate about what we are doing about our movement on passive. So, you know, so I, I, you said a lot and I like how you put it. And think, I think that's what makes a strong person in you because you say you have a unique academic background. People will call it otherwise. People will make it look bad or look different, but then you craft it so well and you look at it like, no matter what obstacles that they stand on my way, I'll make them stepping stones because I need to go up there. And you get laser focused and you get to where you are now. And I'm learning a lot from this. And I hope if young people are listening to us now, we learn from Brother Daniel. Difficulties should never be a way to say, I'm not, I, I, I give up. Uh, there is a lot of hardship. My mom is struggling. I'm struggling. I'm not doing it again. Thank you, bro, for, for really sharing this. And I like the idea you say you did not go in for the money because I think I agree with you. It's not always about money all the time. Sometimes or most of the time, it's first about personal development. And then obviously the growth and the growth and the success comes as you get to where you are now. Much, much, much appreciated. So now connect your excitement, your job, your family life, your history, to what on passive is, is doing or has to offer you, your family and your community now, bro. Yes, uh, Comfort. Um, I did not actually get myself involved in any online business because I know David Bakawa, he knows me as a as a friend, as a work colleague, and he trusted me. And he actually invited me in 2019, actually. But I was still working. I was a senior brands manager for one of the banks here in Port Mosby. So I, I, I got my, I was caught up in my, in my work. As a manager, I go into work for early in the morning to open up the bank and then I close late in the afternoon. So I got no time to sit down and have a closer look. So in 2019, uh, the bank didn't, uh, I just decided to, uh, because uh, my age was catching up. I'm now actually 60 years old. I'm 60 years old, but I don't want to work in the in a bank and, you know, when I get old, they will just classify me as a, a disposal asset and throw me away. So as well, I still have the drive. Well, I still have the drive and power. Maybe I have to do something for myself. So I just left the bank on a good note. I told the management to find a good manager. I trained him for three months uh, in September up all the way to December. And then I left the bank on a good note. I actually, they actually gave me a vehicle, I have a vehicle, I have a housing allowance, but I just gave it away because uh, I said, I, while I still have the drive, I have to go out and do something for myself. So when I left work in 2018, then 2019 comes along, and then I, I, I called David Bakao again. I said, David, you you was telling me about a, a, a platform, so uh, I'm ready now if you can send the link, and I, I actually register straight away. I register straight away, and... Uh, I became a founder in 2020. And you know, David Bakao told me that I, uh, Daniel, you have to educate yourself. He didn't tell me more information about on pass. He said, educate yourself. But because I, I built my, my life on investing on my development, these things is not new. It's a challenge. When he said that educate yourself, I saw it as a challenge. And I said, okay, fine. But I educate myself then. So I started to learn. 
then I went online and I started to connect on webinars, other webinars. And the one first webinar I attended was Charles Osong. And you know, Charles, when he wants to come on webinar, he tells his story. Charles tells his story. And I want to tell Charles that that story has an impact on me as well. Because when I listened to Charles, he said, I had over 30, 35 years of IT, and he said he covered all the all the areas in the IT uh, sector. And I was sitting down and I said, this guy is a very experienced person. He lives in the United States. He said, 35 years of experience in IT. What good does he see on passive when he came in? And he said, I'm not an IT person. And if the, this fellow can see that, then I don't have any reason to wait. And he said, if he's, he he identified any any uh, uh, bad things about on passion, then he was, he should be the one pick it up. That's why it resonated with me, and I just came in without any question, and I started to develop, understand. I had an all the webinars just to go there and listen, listen. And the next person who came on was uh, Ojun Tambia, Michael Ojun Tambia, because I heard he was an engineer, and I want to convince them uh, women that, that came with me. I look, this person is an engineer, let's ask him a question. So I told uh, uh, engineer Mike, you're an engineer, why did you come to One Passive? Because I want him to explain so that the mothers can say, this guy is an engineer, we are not engineer, what is good about One Passive? So that's how I connect. And that's how I got people uh, 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 sign up with One Passive because of those people who are experienced. So that is my, my journey on Passive. Wow. Uh, and I've been there since. And one thing about here in Papua New Guinea Comfort is that the people who join on passive, they don't understand the business. Mm -hmm. Most of them, maybe 90%, they don't understand the business. But just because they know us as an individual, as a person that they can trust, they just came in. And of course, we have other challenges because mm -hmm. when you trust you and come in, they expect you to explain to them as well. So now these are the things that we are facing at the moment to explain to them. Mm -hmm. So that's why they came into Unpassive. Yeah. So I think, uh, wow. yeah, this is my, this is my journey on Unpassive. <laughs> if I go uh, to the next. Yes, no, yeah. I just I just want to make a quick comment if you let me, Brother David, because I was just laughing. Uh, yeah, I think I call you Brother David now because I want to talk about my brother, David Bakao. I think I love the spirit in Papua New Guinea. If you must know today, if nobody has told you that, Collins Mana, you know him. He loves Papua New Guinea like yes. crazy. Because I think there is that spirit of challenge. Say, come on, go get it. I just love it how David says, come on, go and educate yourself. And then you set yourself to work and you get yourself educated. And I see the empowering spirit here. You call your family to say, come and sit here and listen to people who already have something to do but then they see something in unpassive. That is so special. I can assure you, Collins will comment on this if he's watching us. Collins will agree with me in public that each time he is coming to Papua New Guinea, he gets a bit more ready because you guys are powerful. I can assure you, this is not a joke. I'm not trying to be patronizing. I'm just saying what people know or people say about your community because you, are, you have that challenging spirit. And you, you, you have that special way of reacting to unpassive, asking your questions and stuff. So I see it now from all the delivery you are pouring out on us here. And I'm just so, so very, very uh, excited and see where this takes us to. And of course, you, you think that unpassive is the mother of all businesses. And also you, you, you want to see, you think that it has an impact on international trade businesses and stuff. So just tell us more about that, bro. Okay. Comfort, uh, like I said earlier, my background in banking is international trade finance. I'll just explain to that. In international trade, because uh, people trade in the world, we, we have the buyer and the seller, which is the importer and the exporter. But sometimes the importer cannot spend money on somebody who doesn't know because the trust factor is there. So the only way they can uh, facilitate the trade is they go to the banks and then the banks, they take away the risk. And the banks now communicate with banks, bank to bank, the importer and the exporter of bank, they communicate and they take away the risk so that the trade can take place and payments can take place. So there's a method of payment on international trade called 
documentary letter of credit where they settle international trade payments. Just like you're sending money, why transfer? That's one way. But the most safest method in trade is documentary letter of credit. Now, most of the banks that use this to facilitate trade. That's where my, my field comes in. And the trust should be there. That's where the bank comes in to build the trust and so the trade can take place. But when I see on passive, there's no need for us to approach the banks because I know you come forward. I know my brothers and sisters all around the globe, the founders. And if we need to trade, I just have to talk to them. I ring them up. If I want a vehicle, I want to import a car from Japan. I have Japanese founders or in Vietnam or anywhere in the world. I just ring them up. And because we are founders, we will have accounts in our wallet. We said, hey, my sister comfort. I want something from UK and uh, instead of me, because I trust you, you will get the good uh, best value for me because we are family. So I can transfer money on the internet transfer through using our wallet. I pay you plus your fee. You can start up a business. I pay you. You go and you see whatever I want. And I know it's going to come because I trust you. I don't have to go to the banks. That's why I see on passive is the mother of all business because it takes away the risk of international trade because we have established uh, a friendship, a relationship. There's a family bond around the way. If I need something for Singapore, I call my uh, founders in Singapore or in the Philippines. So we get rid of those other banking and with those unnecessary fees because we deal directly. I, I rather pay a fee to comfort my sister so that we can retain the, the income within the system then we help ourselves and build and uplift other people as well. So we are not for profit. We are here to uplift other people. So we, we, you help me, I will help you. So this is how I see on positive, the mother of all women, and it has a major impact on trade as well. Me as a person in trade, and I want to import something, I will, I will, I will prefer to talk to my founders in another country. Now, example, like later I will go down to my next point down there, like uh, my desire to uplift others. You know, we have water. We have water in my village, but some of the water needs to be purified. If I need to import a machinery or equipment that purifies water, then I can talk to a founder or an engineer or a technical person in that particular country who can supply me with those equipments. So I just pay him. I get the products and he can come here, show me the technical uh, know-how of using those things and we can purify water in the village and people can have clean water. So these are the things that I'm looking beyond. You know, when I when uh, on passive empowers, we have the financial freedom, we will do so many things to improve the way of life. So that's, that's how I, I see it. I, I, I don't know what to do, guys. Just let me know in the comment section. What do you think about our brother listening to this? I just feel like you just like moving me. You're just burning the fire in me. I'm just like, what is he saying? You know, this is just that Mr. Mufare kind of mental mindset. He says, we're not here for profit. We're here to uplift each other. How better could someone put it, guys? This is the just the best, the, the clearest picture of unpassive somebody can paint in their own words. And that is all what unpassive is about. We don't sugar, sugarcoat. We don't beg people to join. We don't convince people. We just say it how we see it. If we are the visionaries trying to see what Mr. Mufare is seeing or look at things from Mr. Mufare's lens. Listen, guys, we need to make this go viral because this is so much of information. This is so much of education. And one thing we've gotten with benefiting from this platform, whether we like it or not, uh, my brother, is that connection around the world. You feel exactly like myself. I think at the very beginning, you said you're coming here because you and myself, we share the same values and a lot of stuff together. I'm seeing everything just fall in place as you speak. Because I'm, I'm somebody who has always wanted to travel. I don't need to think about it. I just need to pack my baggages and call a brother in India and say, listen, I am coming tomorrow. I'm coming next week. You take me down to the villages for a lot a lot of uh, rural areas. I can't go to any country without going down to the rural areas. I'll tell you, this is what I want. You take me here, A, B, C, D. And before on passing, it was never the case. So I'm so very passionate. I'm happy and brought out. We should be gradually rounding up now. I will just give you this last session, last round now to 
give a word of encouragement to both the, the, the internet, our international community, and if you think that there are people within your immediate community in PNG who need a word of encouragement, just say what your heart tells you now before we close down. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm very positive. Uh, on passive is going to deliver. There's, there's no doubt about this. Uh, so I would encourage everybody. Uh, I have changed a lot. Like I mentioned, Charles Olson, but then the Otec brothers came in and they gave a lot of input. And this also empowers my mind. My mind is stretching out. I'm learning a lot. And um, every day I'm learning, I'm learning. And sometimes people think that, oh, Daniel Sun is an IT person. I said, no, I'm not an IT person. I'm just trying my best to learn. And that's the, that's the type of person I am. I want to learn and progress. But otherwise, people see me that I'm an IT person, but I'm not because I want passive. Uh, even my own family, they also, they know that every time I sit down, I, I, I look at my phone. So I encourage all the, my brothers and sisters out there, on passive is real, it is ethical. And like as you said, it's a matter of all business. And that is very true. I can see that. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very positive and I will still remain. Like I said in my one of uh, my other uh, uh, talk in uh, Mino show, I've spent my uh, over 30 years in my working career, and I've just been with on passive for four years. What's four years compared to my patients with 30 years? I can wait for another five years if need I be, know. because I know what is going to deliver. So thank you very much. Oh uh, comfort, uh, I enjoyed our discussion here, and yes. I hope uh, yeah people can be learn something from this. Thank you very much. I think everybody just want guys. Let's know in the in the in the comment section. Do you want our brother back or not? And how often? Because he needs to create time to come here and fire us up. Somebody just needs to listen to somebody naturally sharing this from their own perspective, so that we know the magnitude of what we have in our hands. And some people are joking with it. So, brother Daniel, I really appreciate your time. And of course you are not going away you want to come here like every day as much time as you can afford to just let us share this because it's a journey that is just about to beginning to actually to begin guys and get so excited i can't speak well anymore but again do us a favor share this video to everybody uh like comment let us know what our uh, how you feel about our brother's delivery and why not if you have forgotten i know that sometimes people to forget if you've forgotten to Subscribe to this channel, then the moment is now. Just click on that button and click on the bell because you have much of such like our brother just delivered on a daily basis. Thank you, and I remain your host, Comfort Confo. See you.